His spiritual journey led him on a personal pilgrimage into the footsteps of his ancestors, the wise men of the East. The amazing expedition took Matthew P. John through six major world religions. Matthew considers himself a global citizen. He was born in the East India. He lived in the Middle East and now resides in Canada. Matthew, great to have you back on 100 Huntley Street. Absolutely, my pleasure. So you grew up in India. Were you a spiritual person? Were, I mean, was there something in you that was kind of searching for truth or more meaning in life? Well, I dare to say that most people, if not all people who are born in India are fundamentally spiritual because uh, that country has a spiritual climate around it. Uh, but this is again a spiritual in the sense, not necessarily religious, you know, more of the new agey term per I say, uh, because there is this secular sacred divide which we see in the Western world is uh, practically unknown to the Eastern world. Most of the people are spiritual. In that sense, yes, I was spiritual. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't have a personal relationship with uh, whatever we call God at the time. So that's a journey, was a p my own personal journey. I had to arrive at that conclusion on my own. And uh, and that that was a personal discovery to me. Yes. Now, India, of course, uh, with the influence of the British, yeah. uh, that, that, you know, would play a part in it too. And then you also look back in terms of church history with Thomas, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. coming to India and bringing the gospel there. So there's mm -hmm. been that. And, and I know as I've traveled to India, you don't talk to too many people there that would say they're outright atheists. That's right. Yeah. So that's, that's exactly what I said, because there is this quest for the supreme light, uh, the eternal uh, soul, the, the universal soul, as we say, that is kind of ingrained in that culture. And I dare to say that is there in every human being in every culture, mm -hmm. uh, but it somehow we use uh, another um, scientific framework in the postmodern West to sort of redefine it and try to get away from it. But I think I have seen this in, in the Western world too. And everybody has that, um, that that quest for meaning, some some kind of thirst to connect with this transcendent entity. Uh, so that that is there ingrained in everybody. And Indians are um, probably uh, more so okay to admit that. So yeah, so that would be the difference. How old were you then when you really started this spiritual journey? Yeah, uh, my personal spiritual journey started when I was in my engineering college. I was around 18 or so. Uh, I was reading all the religious texts and the first, you know, I was not particularly interested in reading the Bible, even though I was brought up in a nominal Christian family because the Bible was not a book to be read, it was a book to be revered and I was not supposed to read it. Uh, you know, we used to touch it, you know, with, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an object of devotion. Um, but the first books I read was Hindu scriptures and, you know, uh, the children version of it because it's uh, mythology. Even as a nominal Christian, oh, as you yeah. said, yeah? Yes, yeah. So as you mentioned, um, in, interestingly, because you have been to India, you know this, not many people in the Western world knows the fact uh, that uh, Christianity came to India, you know, in AD 53 or so, mm -hmm. that's when St. Thomas, but many people uh, in the Western world think that British brought Christianity to India, which is not so. There was this early sect of Christianity uh, that is, you know, we trace our tradition, uh, particularly from the southern part of India, uh, a place called Kerala, where I am from, and we trace our tradition, Christian tradition, all the way back to first century. Um, so, uh, so what I'm saying is that, so I had that nominal Christian background, um, but I, I sort of rediscovered my religion through a personal encounter I had uh, while I was in my engineering college. Um, you I, were challenged, weren't you, right? Uh, yeah, in, in so many ways. Uh, you know, I was uh, reading different scriptures and, you know, try to understand why people are connecting with God and why there is that quest in, you know, like I say, embedded in, mm -hmm. in all of us. Um, but is, eventually I realized that God is a person, not just a universal spirit or you know some this vague entity. Uh, and at some point, Greg, and you know this more than I do, you know we all have to have a, an encounter with God. Yeah. That's when we become 
uh, a religious person, if you ask me, whether Christian or not. And you know, I am a Christian. I and I had a, I had a meeting with God per se. <laughs> okay, well, that's, we'll talk about your meeting when <laughs> yes. we come back as we continue sure. your pilgrimage. <laughs> you sure. When we come back with more of 100 Huntley Street.